laugh. He's had a laugh. Get him out of here. Go get him the fuck out of here. He's had a laugh. What's happening guys, Supernova here, back with another video. Before we get into it though, just a reminder, this channel is not monetized by YouTube. What does that mean? That means that I don't make a cent of any of the content you see here on this channel. So if you enjoy my content and would like to support me monetarily, consider making a donation via either Cash App or Venmo, or becoming a patron over at Patreon, there's even a $1 tier. If you can't or don't want to do that, no biggie guys, at least consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this content because it does about the channel. Now, with that said, let's get into this video. So today we're going to talk about the Phil Spencer interview that happened over at Xcast, which is the Xbox podcast for Kind of Funny Games, because he said more than a few things that had me just saying, wow, I can't believe this man really just fucking said that. Um, I know there were a lot of people that wanted me to make a Redfall impressions uh video or a redfall review or something regarding redfall uh, i'm not gonna do that uh mostly because i haven't even finished the game i'm still working on it uh but i haven't quite finished it also i did make a live stream pretty much doing that and to make a video about the same shit i just talked about in the live stream to me i, I just i don't know it, it doesn't make any sense uh but that live stream does exist and if you really want to hear me go in on Redfall and roast that game, uh, you can go check out that live stream. I'll link it in the description. And uh, here's a snippet of that live stream so you can get an idea of the type of content you're going to get watching it. Uh, <laughs> let's just say I, I have a lot of fun in my live streams. But uh, here's that snippet. The missions are go to this place. Hey, remember that place you went to? Uh, go to it again and just do this new thing. Hey, 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 how's it going, guy? Hey, oh, hey, come here. I got a mission for you, bro. Come here, come here. I know you're looking for shit to do. I know that this world is devoid of life. I know that there ain't shit for you to do in this world. I know you're dying for missions. You want some shit to do. I got you, bro. I, I'm your man. I got the mission for you. It's gonna make this game more enjoyable. I got you, bro. I, got, I know you've been running around doing nothing. Listen, listen, I got you, bro. Ready? That place you've been to six times, go there a seven time. Get the fuck out of my face. So, uh, <laughs> so that's that's a snippet uh, to give you an idea of what the, the live stream is like. And yes, I am well aware that there is something wrong with me. <laughs> but anyway, let, let's talk about this Phil Spencer interview uh, because they talked about some shit that I really wasn't expecting them to talk about. Uh, when I heard that Phil Spencer was going to be on xcast i figured he was going to get a lot of softball questions but no they right away asked about redfall uh and we're talking about the cma like this man appeared on xcast and the first thing they did the second he walked through the door was they fucking grabbed both his nipples and just fucking twisted those motherfuckers right purple nurple all day son uh but let's start with let's start with the shit he said about redfall uh, because honestly, sadly, the shit he said about Redfall is the least, <laughs> the least worrisome shit that he said. It's the shit he says later on in the interview that had me saying, wow. Uh, but let's start with what he has to say about Redfall. Bill, of course, Redfall has released from Arcane Austin, and uh, it's been a tough release week for that, coming out to low reviews and a lot of disappointment from many fans. Can you talk about that? What is your thoughts right now as we head into the first week of this game being out? Yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'll start, not, I'll, I'll hit, I'll hit Redfall, but I'll just say all up, um, you know, there's, there's nothing that's more difficult for me than disappointing the Xbox community. Um, I've been a part of it. For a long time, I obviously work on Xbox, head of the business, have a lot of friends, get a lot of feedback. Um, and just to kind of watch the community lose confidence, be disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, I'm upset with myself. Uh, I, I kind of make it, revisit our process. You know, I think back to the announcement of 60 frames per second, and then we weren't shipping 60 frames per second. That was kind of our punch in the chin rightfully uh a couple weeks ago 
and then seeing the game come out and the critical response was not what we wanted. Um, and it's, it's, it's disappointing. First off, I want to point out that holy shit, does this man sound defeated, right? I'm not the only one that, that that's hearing that, right? Like he really sounds like he's just, he, he's fucking had enough, right? Uh, and listen, honestly, I don't blame him. Between the CMA block and now this, I imagine Phil has had a, a lot of restless nights the last few days. So I don't really blame him for sounding that way. But it's just it, when you're the head of this company, because that's what he is, right? He's the head of this company. He, he is literally the face of Xbox. Uh, when you go out to do these interviews, you can he can still say the same things, but at least project some some semblance of confidence right he he doesn't sound confident in this interview not at any point does he sound confident and it only gets worse as we get further into this interview but let's look at this clip right he's saying that the most difficult thing for him is to disappoint the xbox community and fans and to watch them lose confidence in xbox and, and it's like well, Phil, you could have easily avoided doing that, right? Like, there, there's no way you guys put eyeballs on Redfall and didn't notice the issues that it had. He briefly mentions the 60 frames per second shit, you know, taking that as a hit on the chin. And honestly, look, the 30 frames per second on console, that's the least of Redfall's worries. That, it doesn't even matter at this point. It's all of the other shit that's happening in this game. There is no way that playtesters or their QA department sat down, played Redfall, and didn't notice the multitude of issues that this game has. Forget the bugs, which there's a ton of them. Forget the bugs. There's no way they played this game and did not notice the brain-dead AI. And there are far more issues than that. And... I go into all those in, in my live stream, and so I'm not going to cover them all here. But the point is that there were a ton of issues that anyone that sat down with this game for more than 10 to 15 minutes would have noticed. It should have been evidently clear to anyone playtesting this game or any QA department that Xbox has who put eyeballs on this game. It should have been very clear that this game was not ready, that this game was unfinished and needed more time. And the fucking thing is that Phil Spencer has admitted in the past that Microsoft has shipped games too early. And to his credit, he delayed both Starfield and Redfall from 2022 to 2023. Great. Good job, Phil. If they need more time, they need more time. So he admits that Microsoft ships games too early, delayed both these games because they need more time, and then goes ahead and releases Redfall too early. Bro, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? Like, just delay it again. And yes, I understand that doing so is going to disappoint some people. But like I always say, I'd rather be temporarily disappointed by a delayed game than permanently disappointed by the release of a buggy, broken, unfinished game. Right? And honestly, look, a delay of Redfall wouldn't have fixed everything, okay? Because a lot of the issues with Redfall do come down to the overall design of that game and no amount of polish was going to fix that. However, at the very least, they may have been able to fix the AI, fix a lot of the bugs, fix the texture popping, even get that 60 frames patch they're working on. Maybe they could have had that 60 frames ready to go at launch so that they wouldn't have had to worry about the 30 frames, right? There are many things they could have corrected so that when Redfall did release, it would have at least, at the very minimum, released in a much better state than it did. But now I ask the question, well, did Phil learn anything, right? Like, Phil in the past has admitted Microsoft has shipped games too early. Phil again has shipped a game too early. So now going forward, what's Phil gonna do? I don't have any fucking idea. 
right? And it's hard to sit here and say, you know what? Phil learned his lesson. We're not going to see any more game ship early. Because Phil already said he learned his lesson and then shipped the game too early. But anyway, let's get back to this interview. If I think about a team's execution on a game, there's we had a creative vision. And did we realize that vision through the game that we created? That's not a delay question if the answer is no. Like you can't take something that that you started on. This isn't a Redfall specific conversation, right. but we will build games that review in the high 80s and we will review we will build games that review in the 60s. I mean it's just kind of part of being in game publishing and if if you're afraid of that then you shouldn't be in the entertainment business, you shouldn't be in the games business. <laughs> Excuse me, what? We will build some games that review in the 60s? Why, Phil? Why would you build games that review in the 60s? The worst part of this quote, though, isn't the fact that he says we will you know, build games that review in the 60s, which I don't know why he's saying that, but it's the part where he says that's just part of games publishing. So essentially, what Phil Spencer is doing is excusing releasing games that review in the 60s. And listen, Xbox fanboys, don't try to take this quote and twist what he said or hit me with the, well, no, see, what Phil actually meant was, because that's what Xbox fanboys love to do. Every time Phil Spencer says some shit, they instantly become fucking mind readers. They put bandanas on their heads, bust out crystal balls, and turn into fucking Miss Cleo. The man said they're going to build games that review in the 60s, and if that happens, that's just part of games publishing. What? I'm sorry. Uh, for me, this is the worst type of attitude for someone in a leadership position like him to have. First of all, to come out and say, yeah, we're going to release games that review in the 60s, why anybody in his position would say that is beyond me. But then to go the extra step and say, you know, if that happens, that's just game publishing. As if the games are just going to make themselves and he has nothing to do with the games. He has no say in how those games release. He has nothing to do with the creation of those games. He has no power when it comes to these games. These games are just going to come out and some may be 60s and that's games publishing. I'm sorry, I don't know about you, but for me, this is the worst attitude someone in a leadership position could have. First of all, this man has pretty much just accepted that they may release games that are 60s in the future, and it seems to not even bother him. Why would you want to release a game that's in the 60s? Why would you accept the fact that you may make games that are in the 60s? I'm sorry, that's not okay. And then to say that's just games publishing as if none of the fault is his. What the fuck, right? Oh, Starfield comes out and it's a 60. Hey, that's just games publishing, guys. Avowed comes out and it's a 60. Hey, that's just games publishing, guys. Hellblade 2 comes out and it's a 60. Hey, guys, that's just games publishing. You know, we're going to have 60s. We're going to have some 80s. We're also going to have some 60s. No, dude, that's not what you are supposed to be saying. That is not the attitude you should be having. Your attitude should be that every game you make is not aiming for 80s, is aiming for 100. Will you hit 100? Not every time. But you are always aiming for 100. That's what you're trying to hit. But it seems like Phil Spencer doesn't give a shit, right? Hey, we're going to have some 80s, we're going to have some 60s, and that's games publishing, guys. How am I, as an Xbox owner, supposed to have any faith in products going forward when clearly you aren't aiming for excellence? Clearly you're not aiming for the gold. Clearly you're not aiming for an A+. Clearly you're not aiming for 100%. You're just going to make some fucking games, and if they come out in their 60s, it's just games publishing. Eh, it's okay. It's going to happen. I I'm sorry. I do not like this attitude. I think this is a very poor attitude for someone in his position to have. And if I'm being honest, this is loser mentality. And no one in his position of a company as large as this one should ever have loser mentality. 
The sad part is going forward, it does get even worse. Yes, it gets worse. Learning about the quality, there are clearly, I've seen them, I know there are bugs in Redfall that's launching. Then why the fuck did you release it, Phil? On the score, yeah, we do mock reviews for every game that we we launch, and this is like double digits lower than we thought we would be um, with this game when, through our mock reviews. Okay, so Phil Spencer was saying that when they make games, they do these internal mock reviews. Essentially, they have people in within the company who sit down and play the game, and then they give the score that they think this game is going to get, so that they, as a company or as a, as a developer, have an idea of what this game is going to score. And Phil Spencer says that internally, their mock review, I don't know if it's a average or aggregate or how they came up with an, an overall score, but he's saying that when they did their internal mock reviews, they were getting scores double digits higher than the scores that Redfall was getting. That's why they were kind of surprised by these scores, because when they did their internal mock reviews, the scores were double digits higher. Well, listen, I don't know what to tell you, Phil, but whoever was doing the internal mock reviews, fucking fire them. Fire them! Because they are doing you, the brand, and your studios no favors. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe the problem that Xbox has is that the people that are their internal playtesters slash mock reviewers are just too fucking lenient on games, right? Maybe that's the problem. All I know is that for people to play Redfall and give it double-digit scores higher than the scores it was actually getting in the real world, that's got to tell you something, right? Because there's no way, again, that playtesters or QA or anybody sat down with this game and played it and did not see the problems. So maybe the problem is those people need to fucking go. They need to go. Put them somewhere else. Have them do something else. You don't have to necessarily fire them. But have them do something else. Because clearly playtesting and mock reviewing these games is not what they should be doing. But look, this video is already getting kind of long, and it was a 40-minute interview, so I'm not going to cover everything that Phil said. So I'm going to skip to the end, because it's really the end part that I really wanted to cover. So I'm going to skip ahead to that part, so we can talk about that. We're not in the business of out-consoling Sony, or out-consoling Nintendo. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will upset a ton of people, but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have, um, in certain cases, very, very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will um, that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team that's on us, not on anybody else. Our vision is that everybody who's on console has to feel like they have a great experience and they're a first-class citizen. They've invested a ton in our platform, but we are not in a position, and I, I see it out there. I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox one generation where everybody built their digital library of games. Yes. You heard that correctly. Uh, Phil Spencer says that there is no reality where building great games or just focusing on building great games would help turn things around. Building great games, making great games would not do anything to change the landscape of the console market shares. No, it doesn't matter, right? Building great games won't make a difference, guys. Building great games is not gonna matter. It doesn't matter. It almost sounds as if Phil Spencer is not even interested in making great games, because clearly, in his opinion, making great games is not going to move the company forward. Making great games is not the solution to the problems. So, that I guess that's why Phil's okay with 60s. Because Phil isn't even concerned with making great games, evidently. Like, what the fuck is this man talking about? And then to go ahead and try to blame it 
on losing the last generation? Oh, th listen, it doesn't matter if we make great games, guys. I hate to break it to you. We lost the Xbox One generation where people have digital libraries built up now. So now, at this point, making great games isn't going to do shit. Are you fucking kidding me? Making great games will make people want to go out and buy your console. Making great games will make people want to sign up for your Game Pass subscription service. This has been the universal truth since the beginning of fucking time. When you make great products, people want to purchase them. But evidently, in Phil Spencer's mind, Making great games, providing great products, that's not going to make a difference, guys. It doesn't matter. It's not important. And again, Xbox fanboys, don't hit me with your fucking Miss Cleo mind-reading bullshit and try to tell me what Phil Spencer actually meant. The man just said that making great games will not do anything. It's almost as if, at this point, making great games is not what he's concerned about because... It won't make a difference, right? Like, is this the attitude that the man in charge of this company should have? I don't think so. Um, so when you go and you're building on Xbox, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome. But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race, I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people, like 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems and their digital library is there. This is the first generation where the big games that they're playing um, were games that were available last gen. When you think about Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft, like the continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we are in today. There is no world where Starfield's an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. You're right, Phil. It's probably not going to happen. If Starfield came out and was an 11 out of 10, people probably would not sell their PS5s. But they don't have to, Phil. They don't have to sell their PS5s as long as they go out and also buy an Xbox. Do, do you not understand that it's possible for people to own multiple consoles, Phil? Your job as the head of Xbox is not to get people to sell their PlayStations. It's just to get them to buy your Xbox. Because it doesn't matter if they have a PS5 as long as they also have your Xbox. What the fuck are we doing here, Phil? I don't know what this man is fucking talking about. I don't know what the hell is going on in his head. But yes, making great games will make a difference because if you are making great games and releasing banger after banger after banger, even someone who only plays on Switch or even someone who only plays on PlayStation, they're going to take notice of the fact that, holy shit, they're releasing banger after banger after banger over there on the Xbox. Maybe I will go get an Xbox also. So, I'm sorry. Contrary to what you fucking said earlier, Phil, making great games will make people want to go out and buy an Xbox. And we all know that right now, Xbox isn't the main product that you guys have, right? It's Game Pass. That Game Pass service is your main product. We all know that. But guess what? The more Xboxes you sell, and the larger the Xbox install base, the more people are going to sub to Game Pass. So if you want to grow Game Pass on console, which you yourself, Phil, said is kind of stagnated, because if you didn't know that, Phil Spencer himself said Game Pass growth on console has stagnated. Well, how do you fix that, Phil? You sell more consoles. How do you sell consoles, Phil? You make great games. Again, what the fuck are we doing here? I don't know if Phil's headspace is just not in a good place because he's had a week of just getting his ass kicked between the CMA blockage and this Redfall launch. But none of the shit this man is saying 
A makes sense or B gives me any faith in this brand going forward. Uh, and I don't understand how he expects it to give people faith in the brand going forward. Phil clearly wants Xbox to kind of go off and do their own thing, right? He says they're not in the business of trying to out-console Sony or Nintendo. Nor do they have to, right? Xbox does not have to be the market share leader. But just because they can't sell more consoles than PlayStation doesn't mean that the idea or strategy of making great games just gets thrown out the door. Like, I don't understand Phil's strategy going forward, but clearly to this point, whatever strategy he has is not working. We just got the report that Xbox hardware sales are down 30%. And listen, miss me with that bullshit about it being hardware constraint issues, okay? First of all, Xbox paid money for chip priority to help alleviate any hardware restraint issues. Also, you can find Xbox Series X and S all over the place, in Amazons, Walmarts, Targets. And just because one person may go to their local Walmart and there's none on the shelf, doesn't mean that there's a hardware constraint issue because you can go someplace else and find it no fucking problem. So miss me with that bullshit. The hardware is down 30%, not because of hardware constraint issues, it's demand issues. And how do you solve the demand issues, Phil? By releasing bangers. Forget 11 out of 10. Starfield comes out, and it's a 9 out of 10, and it's getting rave reviews all over the place, and it's all over social media. Guess what, Phil? People will go out and buy an Xbox to play Starfield. If they're PlayStation gamers, are they going to sell their PlayStation? Probably not, but again, they don't have to. I, I don't understand what the fuck this man is talking about, and listen... I have thought for a long time that the direction Xbox was going in was not the right one. I felt that they were heading down the wrong road, and I felt that Phil was guilty of mismanagement and just wasn't really up to the task, but I never called for this man to be removed from his position or to be fired or let go. But I gotta be honest, it is hard for me to hear this interview and hear the things that he's saying and just hear this loser mentality that he has this, this just defeatism about him where it seems like making great games is not really his concern where he's excusing if a game comes out and scores a 60 this attitude where it doesn't feel like he's aiming for or shooting for excellence as an Xbox owner, this doesn't give me any faith in the brand going forward. And I'm sorry, at this point, I do believe that Phil Spencer should be removed from his position. Put somebody else in. Put someone else in who, who is hungrier, who is more competitive. Because that's what someone in this position of power needs. They need to have a competitive nature, right? Maybe they don't think that they can overtake PlayStation, but God damn it, they're going to try. Maybe they don't think they can be the market leader, but God damn it, they're going to try. They're going to try to make nothing but great games, nothing that scores below an 80 in their mission to be number one. Because when you shoot that high, you may not hit the target, but even if you fall short, you're still going to be doing pretty damn good. But when you're not even shooting for excellence... When you're not shooting for number one, when you're just shooting for mediocrity, when you fall short, guess where you land? You land where Redfall lands. This man needs to go. He is not up to the task. His loser mentality is not doing Xbox any favors. Get him the fuck out of here. I've never called for his removal before. Even though I thought Xbox was going in the wrong direction, even though I didn't like a lot of the decisions he made, I never called for his removal. But at this point, I don't see how this man can effectively do his job or effectively lead this company anywhere positive. He needs to be replaced with someone who's hungry, someone with a competitive nature. Because Phil Spencer's attitude of just not caring about competing, that's the problem. That is the problem, and I'm sorry, unless he's replaced, I, I, at this point, don't have any faith in this brand, 
and this brand has a lot of potential. Xbox is the holder, especially after the ZeniMax acquisition, of lots of great IP. They can do a lot of great things. But it all starts with the leadership. And if the leadership's mentality is, eh, we, we don't care about competing, eh, you know, it doesn't matter if we make great games, eh, you know, we're going to get some games that score in the 60s. When that's the mentality of your leadership, how can anyone expect this brand to do anything great? I'm sorry, guys. Phil's got to go. And I know a lot of you out there love Phil Spencer. I know you love that he plays games. But Xbox doesn't need a gamer. They need a hungry, competitive businessman to lead this company, to lead this brand to, and I know it's Sony's thing, but to lead Xbox to greatness. Right? Xbox can still have greatness, even if they're not the market leader, even if they're not selling more consoles than PlayStation or Nintendo, they can still achieve greatness. But they have to have leadership aiming for greatness, not aiming for mediocrity. At the beginning, Phil may have started with aiming for greatness, but at this point, Phil just seems tired. Tired and defeated and just seems to be aiming for mediocrity. The man is spent. He's spent. Get him out of there. Just like when you have a pitcher in a baseball game that his arm is getting tired. He's not, he can't throw the heat anymore. What do you do? You bring in a new pitcher. You bring in someone who can throw that heat. Phil's tired, guys. You can't convince me otherwise. I just listened to a 40-minute interview of a tired and defeated man. Bench him. He doesn't have to be fired. He can still work for Xbox and do something else. But when it comes to being the head of Xbox, bench him and bring in a relief pitcher. Because Phil's clearly done. And that's all I got for you guys on this one. And that's the video, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you think Phil needs to go? Or do you still have faith that Phil will right the ship and lead Xbox to brighter horizons? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys on the next Supernova.